be proportioned. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 16, 2. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay up in store for him as God hath prospered him. God's not asking for something that, that, that you don't have. I'd like to give and I can put it on a credit card and I'll pay it back when I get it. That's not what God's asking. That's not what God's asking. What God is saying is as God increases you and your finances, you reciprocate that back to God. It's proportionate. God is only asking for what you already have and what he increases you to have. He's asking for things to be proportionate. I would much rather see $10 from someone who has $10 than $10 from someone who has $1,000. I know that sounds silly. I think it's more amazing. It's a more... It's... It, 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 it's more of a testimony to God's work when a small church like this has such significant offerings. And I mean that there's, sometimes I just scratch my head and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense, Lord. Like per person, doesn't make any sense. I mean, if you, if you factor in the land that we got last year, this little church brings in almost a half a million dollars. Does that make sense to you? How many make sense to you? That makes sense to me. The, pre, the people who miss out on the blessing are the people who aren't participating in that blessing by giving back to God what's already his. That, that, that to me just amazes me. We, I sit in amongst a, 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 a group of generous people, and I mean that. I, I, I absolutely mean that. The, the kids are generous. They give. Adults, they give. The only people that take are the IRS. We need to give to the Lord. Let me just give you a quick conclusion, okay? This is really great. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to illustrate this. Ready? Here we go. 2 Corinthians 9. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Now let me explain this. I'm going to give you the picture of a, of a farmer. We're in Iowa. I can do this, right? I'm going to give you old school type of farming. Okay? They'd reach into this bag of seed and they would, uh, they would throw it out. Okay? they just kind of throw it out and they just kind of work it around. Just like this. Now, what he's saying here is he would soweth sparingly. So now take a picture of a guy and he takes a little bit of seed and he, and he throws it out. Now this isn't prosperity gospel. You understand that what he gets back is different than what he put in. I'm not saying you give... A million, you're going to get two million. That's not what I'm saying. But now you see this guy reaching this bag and he throws it out. Okay? Who's going to have a better crop? Generally speaking, it's the guy that sows a lot. The guy that's over here and he's sitting out there and he's throwing it, he's throwing it. You guys ever throw grass seed down? That's how I do it. My trick is I throw the grass seed down, then I take a rake and I just pull it over with the time. And then I throw a little more. And then I pull it over with the times. And then I water the snot out of it. And usually it does really good. Like, my, like there are some people who just kind of sprinkle it. That's not how you do it. You take that bag and you just, ugh, like that. And whoo, it's like a big blanket of grass seed. That's how you do it. It costs more, but you're going to have but you're gonna have a golf course. So you get out there and you throw that seed. You throw that seed. Because the more you throw the better chance you have of right here, he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. The person who gives, the, 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 the generous person, has a generous reward. That's what it's saying. Now this isn't, I'm not preaching condemnation to you guys. I'm just preaching that this is Bible. You want to be blessed, you give. That's what I'm saying. The more you give, the more you get. You cannot outgive God. He created, it's all his anyways. So what are we if we lose any of it? Not ours to begin with. When we have a proper perspective, when we see that this doesn't even belong to God, or this doesn't even belong to God, this doesn't belong to me. It belongs to God. Let me just retract that. 
When we say that doesn't belong to us, it's easy to throw it out there, isn't it? It's easy to share what's not yours. So when we have the right perspective, we begin to share more. And we begin to reap more. What a blessing it is to give. I know that I could give better. But I pretty much preach this with a very clear conscience. I know I could give better. We all could give better. And this is why it's one of the hardest messages to preach because I know that this cuts. Because everybody says, it's my money. I worked hard for it. You did work hard for it. You absolutely did work hard for it. This isn't some sort of liberal agenda to say, just spread it all around. (laughs) God's blessed you. God's blessed you and, 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 and you will be blessed even more. It's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now think about this. Think about the Son of God who's in heaven right now with God the Father. The Holy Spirit is working on earth with all the Christians right now, inside of Christians, right? We are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in us. That's what it says. So the Holy Spirit resides in us. So the Holy Spirit's moving around. God the Father, God the Son, they're in heaven. Imagine for a moment the loneliness that he would experience if he didn't give his son. He wanted to fellowship with all of us. And the most selfless act he could do was to give someone, his son, his only begotten son, to spare all of us that one day we would be fellowshipping with him. Who really makes out the best in this? Go both ways. We make out the best, he makes out the best because he gets to fellowship with all of us. Giving is not bad. Giving is a huge blessing. If all you have is a dollar and you give 10 cents, if you give 11 cents, if you gave a dollar, giving to God is all that's asked. Not giving what you don't have. If you don't have millions, don't, you can't give millions. If you have millions, I had, a, I, had a, I had a someone close to me and this is what they said. They said, if I were to give 10%, this is what they said to me, I would give tens of millions of dollars to the church. And that would eliminate the responsibility for other people to give. I scratched my head. I said, no, they don't go to this church. I wish they did. but (laughs) You know what I told them? I said, your responsibility is to give. Don't base your obedience on other person's disobedience. God has called you to give. You know, it's neat to see how much God gave for us. He gave his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sin. And we give so little to him. Now, I just have to step away from the finances. Just a moment. Now, this is on planning our giving financially. Let me just say this. If you're not giving your time to God, if you have not given your kids to God, if you have not given your life to God, surrendered your life, that's something you need to do. Now, not in order to be saved. In order to go to heaven, it's very, very, very simple. I want this hand to represent you and me, and I want this wallet to represent all of our sin. God says, we all have sin. In order to go to heaven, we have to be sinless. This sin has to be paid for. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is not giving money. The wages of sin is not filling, filling the offering plate. The wages of sin is not obedience to giving money to the church. The wages of sin is not walking an aisle or praying a prayer. The wages of sin is death. Someone had to die. Someone had to die. Now, I might have a bigger offering if I said, you want to get saved, you can go to heaven, you got to give money. We might have more baptisms if I said, you all got to be baptized in order to go to heaven. But that's not true. It's just simply not true. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. Someone had to die for this. Now, you can either die and spend an eternity separated from God forever, 
or you can allow Jesus Christ, I want this hand and I mean it reverently, represent the Lord Jesus. The Bible says that He, God, was made sin for us. Isn't that amazing? Someone had to die. Someone had to die. Well, Jesus, 2,000 years ago, came to this earth to die on the cross to pay for our sin debt. That's how simple it is. He made the payment. If we make the payment, we're going to spend an eternity separated from, from Him. So Jesus came to this cross, to the earth, to the cross, to die on the cross for us. And then simply the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith. Not works, not giving money, not walking an aisle, praying a prayer, building the church. Not surrender. Not living a good life, not turning from sin, getting water baptized. It's when we believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for us. Everything after that is service. But in order to be saved, we trust Jesus alone as our personal Savior. And I pray that everyone here in this room does that. I pray that nobody leaves this room without saying in the quietness of their own mind, Lord, I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for me. 